It's a new series, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, in this new series, we are talking about dreams, we're talking about plans, we're talking about visions, we're talking about ideas, grand things that we want to make come to pass. However, we are facing impossibility barriers. And so I want us to see how we can be able to break through these impossibility barriers. And that's why I'm talking about five ways of breaking impossibility barriers in our dreams and in our plans. I know of no one who has major dreams that they are scratching their heads. They are not scratching their heads to find out how in the world is this going to happen. Maybe the dream is about putting food on the table for your kids. Maybe it's about putting a ring on someone's daughter's finger. Or maybe it's a dream about going to school and getting that degree. Maybe it's a dream about getting that job or getting the book done or whatever it is. Sometimes we do face these impossibility barriers and I want us to see how we can be able to deal with them. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namalik. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Life Signatures episodes are brought to you by AfricanBooks.com, which is an online ebook platform that seeks to broadcast the African Christian voice to the world. As such, they have become a hub for African content, connecting African writers and publishers with a global reading audience. Publishing your books on their site is free and easy, with authors having full control over their content and the price they choose to sell at it. I was personally blown away by the concept that AfricanBooks.com is coming up with. Things like no content from their site or their app is going to be run on laptops so that people can easily copy. In other words, your content as a writer is restricted from digital multiplication or digital copying. So you remain intact with your information. Another concept that I got so blown away with was the fact that in some time to come, in due course, AfricanBooks.com will be starting to announce African Writer of the Year. In other words, there will be competitions in all African countries to figure out who is the best published author. And I also fell in love with the fact that countries can actually compete against each other. You can have African authors going at it after each other. And your book as an author will be reviewed and have some stars and recommended upon that particular platform. The thing is that it's an answer to Amazon.com. You know, with Amazon, what happens? You've got to have an account in the Americas or whatever, or in Europe before you can get paid as an author. But here, the local currency is in play and the local means of getting paid are in play. So to get started, go to AfricanBooks.com as an author or as a publisher and even as a reader if you wanted to read your African favorite authors. Enjoy! All of us have recycle bins of dreams. You know what a recycle bin is? It's that uh, thing in uh, Windows (laughs) where when you delete something, it goes there temporarily before you can make up a decision either to exterminate it from your laptop completely or not. 
And all of us, even as we've been growing up, how many of us are not guilty of having dreams that have been put into the recycle bin or be put in the back burner and they're just lingering there? How many of us have our ideas that we've been able to write and come up with and at first was seriously passionate about them, but today... When we think about them, we feel like we're failures. We feel so apathetic towards them because of one thing or another. These sometimes are coming about by impossibility barriers, seeming impossibility barriers that we face in our lives at some point in time or another. And no, you are not lacking resources in bringing those dreams to pass. Yes, you are faced with impossibilities at the moment, But if you want them to be possibilities from the word go, then I think you haven't dreamt big enough. If you wanted to dream and it's done on day one, I don't think it's a dream. I don't think it's a, maybe it's just a task. It's like I'm going to buy lunch, right? And you have the money to go and buy the lunch. When you come back, it's accomplished. It's done. That's not a dream. A dream is something that you want badly to come to pass. And yet you look around you, there are no resources, seemingly no resources, no people. You've got nothing going on for you to accomplish that which you're dreaming. That's what I am talking about. I'm not talking about those things that you can see today and then tomorrow. They are done. Those are not dreams. You see, scheming, planning, considering, imagining and thinking, reviewing, evaluating, and all these mind-mapping things that we normally do with our dreams, at times they can be extremely discouraging. Sitting down to plan of a project and maybe you want to buy land and build a house and you've nothing in your pocket, zero, zooch. It is not exciting. It is not exciting to review, to plan. It is not exciting at all. At at all times, like I hinted on yesterday, at all times your mind is thinking, how? How? How in the world is it going to happen? How? How? You see, at times we kill this, and I'm going out of myself, we kill these dreams by going too soon on finding out how in the world is this going to happen before we can crystallize and clarify the dream itself it is discouraging to plan it is discouraging to do all these mind mapping things it, it it's it's not easy because you're building it from zero from seemingly virtually nothing and with absolutely no help and why people give up on dreams it is because of this That's why people with no physical resources, no empirical evidence of anything that can even get you started, no financial capital over their dreams and desires, they never take a minute to consider the dreams in full. Never. Never. Why? Because their mind is always saying, how? Hmm? Build a house? You've got no money. How? How are you going to do it? Right? Go to school? I mean, go and get a degree? How? Pray tell me. How in the world are you going to do that? What in the world are you going to do? How are we going to get started? The dream is there. But just because there is no how, right? As in immediately apparent, right then and there, somebody gives up on the dream. Doesn't even think about the dream at all. It, the, 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 the moment it comes to your mind and you look around, and this one happens in microseconds, sometimes it's even in minute seconds. The dream comes in your spirit, in your heart, in your mind, and you look around, there's no money in your bank, there's no money in your phone, there's nothing. It goes directly from conception to death into the recycle bin. Why? Because there is no money. So people don't take a minute to consider their dreams in full. They give up because outside there is nothing to pop the dream up. They stare at the impossibilities and they get extremely discouraged because they cannot see past their difficult reality now.
I'm not saying realities should not be things that we should not consider. But let me tell you sometimes, some of these so-called realities at times are illusions. Yesterday, my wife was telling me something interesting. She said that oh, the, the dishes were just piled up there and they look like there's so many. And I don't like washing dishes. You know, the house hadn't come. I don't like washing dishes and so on. And I just felt like the whole day, these things are so many for me to do and so on. And... I just started washing them and voila, I mean, they were not even many. I shouldn't even have uh, wasted my time feel, feeling bad about washing them. They are so few. Again, that's what we feel sometimes about the re so-called realities of our dreams, the impossible realities today. You feel like, man... I don't know nothing about this dream. I don't know nothing about how to make it a possibility. And you stop dreaming. You bench it. You throw it away. You get discouraged. It becomes an impossibility. And if today it was an impossibility, tomorrow it's even heavier. The more you wait on acting on it, the more it becomes impossible and heavier. And this heaviness and the impossibility... Let me just steal for you the marking scheme of these episodes. The impossibilities sometimes are in the mind, not empirically in reality. Even if it's in reality empirical that I don't have the money, there is money in this world that can be found one way or another. So sometimes, like Tony Robbins says, our problem is not resources, not lack of resources. Our problem sometimes is lack of resourcefulness. So we've got to start looking at these things in a different way. What I'm trying to tell you today is this. You've got to make some time and at least consider your dreams. Even in the face, in the wake of considerable reality of impossibilities you're facing today there is no money there is no one to help you there's no one to open the door for you you don't have this you don't have that still don't throw away that dream consider the dream review the dream mind map of the dream before you know it the dishes were not so many i could have washed them in a second and i was back there thinking there are so many what am i gonna do consider your dream the reality might not be that big. Sometimes in our thinking there is no way that the dream will come to pass, especially looking at the reality on the ground. Now, there's a time for reality to check in. There's a time for the realist in you to rise up. But that time is not when you are dreaming. It's not when you are engaging your imagination and switching on the dream machine in your life. That's not the time for the realist to come up and say, hey, wake up no i mean s s shoot that realist down <laughs> and dream for a minute right the time for being a realist will come but not now not now not now now is time to dream now is the time to consider now is the time to just like a kid remember like we talked about yesterday just like a kid to just 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 see no impossibility. I cannot begin to tell you how many times I have been absorbed by virtue of the impossibility. I have aborted very many dreams that exist in this world. I, can, I cannot tell you how many people in this world have aborted those dreams. And they just exist. Just there. Especially during the time that we are desiring and we are dreaming and we are visionaring. And we want to have these things in our lives. And the realist shows up and it's over, man. And it's in microseconds. It's over. See, potential has also been stifled. Gifts and talents have also been killed. Abilities have been lying dormant because we seemingly have failed to bridge the gap between the dream and the reality. But I'm telling you something. Just delay the realist for a minute, for a day, but not so long. But delay that guy so long enough that you can have this strong belief in 
the possibility of the dream because the moment the realist comes in he comes in with the impossibility barriers and these impossibility barriers are so hard to tackle if you don't give the dream some time to mature and to grow some roots yeah tomorrow we're going to continue talking about this and why it's critical for us to you know let the dream simmer a little before we can start tackling it until then bye bye Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.